Yeah. A lot of people would say this is beautiful. Nice to look at. Sucks to live in it, at least for me. Been getting to 20 below at night. Let's see, I don't know if you can see the Mount McKinley right now with all the frost on the trees. No. But we usually have a view of Mount McKinley right over there. Uh, excuse me, Denali. We went back to the original name. But the only time it seems like it's nice and clear up here in Alaska is, is this time of year. And for me, after being here almost 50 years, there's only one cure for it. Okay, boys and girls, I've rounded up another TR3. Some assembly required. There's boxes of parts under the under the top here. This is a an aftermarket top, but it's an English one. Um, good back window in it and everything, but yeah, there's just I got to go through all these boxes and boxes of parts. Let's see what all I got. <laughs> all kinds of stuff brand new clutch kit board Borg, and back new uh, floor pans and outer rockers which I desperately need and yeah, the hoods actually an early hood this this one's a 19 another 1960 so Start unpacking this stuff and see what I got. Okay, here's the new parts that I found so far. I think it's most of them, besides the uh, sheet metal. There's a magic kit for the front suspension, the entire uh, setup from the Roadster factory. It's got all the new ball joints, uh, urethane bushings. You know, it's a whole big kit for like 450 bucks. And there's the Borg and Beck clutch kit. A uh, pair of rear bumper irons, a couple of emblems there, a uh, bunch of hydraulic rebuild kits, uh, some duplicates, uh, new pedal rubbers, uh, hood bumpers, more rebuild kits, uh, catch rod for the um, for the glove box, one new. Uh, uh, De Zeus for the hood. Brand new uh, Lucas coil. Uh, there's a, a, a spin on filter adapter. Uh, some new knobs, uh, church key. Uh, there's the little pass through the firewall deals for the heater. Mine are all rusted out. Uh, windshield seal for the bottom of the windshield. Uh, headlight gaskets. Uh, Gaskets for the uh, uh, door hin or door handles, which mine doesn't have, and the hood hinges. Uh, seals for the taillight pair. Uh, new rubber for the fuel tank. There's a new data plate, although my data plate's different. I'm going to keep my original. Uh, there's supposed there things I'm missing so far is a complete heater. It must be in another box over there. So when I go get the car. I'll uh, look for that. And there was something else. Uh, well, I can't think of it at the moment. Oh, uh, a new reservoir for the uh, girling cylinders. So, got a bunch more parts for the for the project for a pretty fair price. And uh, not many TR3s to to scrounge up up here and this guy just went nuts with his credit card so um, made for a good deal for me alright more later well I 
brought another TR3 home. Another one to meet its doom, so to speak. I'm going to start calling Black Penny the Black, or uh, Penny the Black Widow. Well, she's painted black and got a red interior, but she's now going to have consumed two 1960 TR3s to her own end. But, yeah, that's the way it goes. It's the way I got to do it. It's the most economical way of doing it for me, especially for the parts I need. So, I guess we'll start the cut in half. Well, I guess we need a car first. That's better. All right, we'll get out the tools of destruction and deconstruct another TR3s. So this one is gonna disappear. Uh, for those of you that have a weak constitution or are a bit squeamish about these things, you might wanna turn the TV off now. And Lynn, I know how you are, so you, you, you might want to look away. Okay. Should I use a Sawzall? Die grinder? Or... Torch! That's my favorite. Well, the dismemberment is continuing. Nothing inside here. Of course, there wasn't much to remove. Now, just drawing and quartering it. A lot of blood on the floor. Rust. Got to put a new Sawzall blade in. <laughs> That's the main implement of destruction. Still smoky in here from the torch, doing a few cage nuts. So far, every cage nut on this car has fought me. There is nothing. There's, I mean, there's rust everywhere, which is not unusual for these, I guess. But um, yeah, Penny's over there drooling, looking on. With all the body panels. So, yeah, a bit of Bondo hiding stuff, but luckily the fender I needed for the driver's side is mint. Um, a small dent back by the taillight that they Bondoed, but I'll fix that. But other than that, that fender is mint. So, that was the fender. Well, it's quarter to four. Yesterday I was out here until 5 a.m. Well, this morning, I guess. I'm just having entirely too much fun hacking up another one. Finally got the other rear fender off. One bolt in the very back. Those three bolts are a pain in the ass. But it's off. That fender's actually really nice, too. Not quite as nice as the one I need. But, uh... It's really going to come apart tomorrow. There's... I'm going to go bury the pieces out in the backyard. I'm sure T Chef Tush may have a Tush may have a tear in his eye at the moment. There's a white one going away. It's had like three paint jobs. It was originally white, then blue, then gunmetal gray, then white again. So, lots of hidden rust and bondo, you know, nothing unusual. Um, uh, it's as damn near as rusty as my car is over there, except key components I need are still quite usable. So, um, yeah. Yep, I'll be back out here tomorrow. I think I gotta go get some more Sawzall blades. More later.
Well, I had to start cleaning up the garage and start making these parts disappear around the place. I haven't put that many hours in in just a few days and quite some time it was actually enjoyable. Um, it may not have seemed enjoyable for some of you out there hacking apart a complete car, but uh, it was a stress reliever, I guess you could say. And uh, and it's and it's giving me many many good parts to um, do what I need to do for Penny over there. And uh, hey, Jesus, even a nice set of tires. Um, but uh, I know these inner fender wells are different on the wide mouth and the small mouth. But it's basically, as far as I can tell, is it's these divots that were here for the headlights, which I popped them out. And I'll see if I can get them all ironed out. Um, and it has a typical rot down here on the mounts, both, and I'll fix that. But overall, the fender wells are in good condition. They're not really rusty or, or mine are just rotted a pretty bad, and the one on the driver's side is just crushed from the wreck. And uh, yeah, um, this frame is phenomenal. Um, so far, I haven't found any real issues with the frame. Even the outriggers are solid, at least at this time. I haven't found any any rot to speak of in the outriggers, which is uh, kind of interesting, so, com considering how rusty. I mean, look at all that crap down there. Considering how rusty this car was, I can't believe the frame is that nice. I'm just scraping off the grease from all the leaking engine and tranny. And, but uh, this rear end seems to have a little bit of play on the pinion. Um, but uh, I've got the other rear end out of the 57 that I, what was left of that 57 I gutted. And uh, so, yeah, he's a, <laughs> a myriad of fucking parts. Looked like a bomb blew up in here. Went through like four Sawzall blades, uh, two or three cutoff wheels, and a little bit of uh, oxygen settling. Yeah, there's the back end. I'm going to, um, the guy wants the end cap. That I got the car from, but the thing is that end cap's not in very good condition. The one from the race car over there is is in uh, very good condition, and uh, but of course the floor was cut out for the race car, and they cut into the wheel tub a little. And this one here, this is the floor I'm taking. I know it's different on the late cars to the early cars, but to tell you the truth, practically speaking, even though that tub is just slightly bigger with the raise in the floor. And I guess the tub is slightly bigger. I haven't been able to prove that. Even with that, getting that wire wheel in there, that hub sticking out, is almost impossible, even in this tub. It's absolutely impossible in that tub. I, I can see why I guess they were deflating the tires to get them in there. But it's ridiculous how tight that is. So I'm going with the later floor. I've got it, and it's in decent shape. So the later floor is going in that car with the tub, and that'll give me just a little bit more room. And uh, at the rate I'm going, I mean, as much hacking and cutting and piecing together this 55 is is not going to be that original. So, and I, I want to drive it. This is a driver. So being a little more practical, I think, is the way to go. And, uh, well, there's my new floors and... Basically, uh, the rear fender is virtually, uh, oh, there's just one ding in that rear fender. I needed that fender, the driver's side fender is excellent. The other fenders have got some issues, but that one was perfect, as perfect as you're going to get for a used fender. But I'm going to cut the cowl off of this front piece, because I'm going to use the 55 cowl. It's different. And I'm using the bulkhead and inner fender wells off of this, so I'm kind of taking this off in a bit of a big chunk. Yeah, this is a huge jigsaw puzzle, so to speak. <laughs> Taking this many TRs to build one. Uh, this one's got the uh, collapsible column on. I got the whole setup, steering wheel and all. Um, so that's a nice little piece. But anyway, it, uh, it, uh, I don't know. It's a... Time for a little cleanup now. You know, this crap swept up and cleaned up and uh, 
start organizing things. I'll get this piece off probably by tomorrow and then it'll just be a rolling chassis. So, anyway, that's it for now. Well, you think anybody will notice where I buried it? <laughs>